Oh, yeah, yeah. Daddy, what are you doing here? Waiting for you. That is, I'm helping your mother and father wait for you. Well, that's ridiculous. Come here, Roger. Ro Roger Crane, this is my, my father, my mother, and my mother's husband. Well, a real suburban mess, huh? <laughs> Well, she's home safe and sound, I can, uh, I can leave, huh? Good night, all. Nice to meet you, Roger. Roger and I are going to get married. Who? Married? Married. Yes, we're on our way to Las Vegas. John, you're not leaving. Oh, no. Of course not. I want to extend congratulations. How about a drink? Huh? Did you want to say? They want to get married. Sure, I heard. That's why I suggested the drink. Julie, you are not getting married. It is out of the question. Is it? You try and stop me. I'm going upstairs now and pack some things. Julie, John, do well, something. What do you want me to do? Well, talk to her, man. Do something. You can't just let her run off and get married. Why not? That's what Debbie and I did. Oh, but that was different. What was different about it? John, will you just go on upstairs and talk to her? If you won't, I will. Be my guest. <laughs> Tell her to bring her swimming suit. It may be warm up in Vegas. Well, I don't understand you. Why? I don't Why? understand Look, you. I don't think we're being very polite. Here's Mr. Crane standing around, no one talking to him. Sit down, Roger. Oh. After all, he's practically your son-in-law. My son. Thanks, man. How about a drink? Uh, no thanks. Uh, I don't drink. Well, I think I'll have one. I don't know if you got it from the introductions, but I'm John Fillmore, Julie's father. Uh, yeah, I got it. Her mother and I are recently divorced. Oh, yeah, yeah. I got the whole scene. The whole scene. <laughs> you, um, you a student, Roger? Yeah, right. Humanities. Oh, humanities. Well, that's nice. A lot better than inhumanities, huh, Debbie? <laughs> and I suppose you love my daughter. Well, I like her a lot. I really do. She's really a groovy girl. You do? You she really like her. her? That's terrific. Will you stop this? Your daughter is upstairs packing to run away with this hippie. And what are you going to do? Live in one of those wild communes? Uh, no, ma'am. We weren't planning on doing that. You see, they're not going to live in one of those wild communes. How would you know? You're just making polite conversation with him. What do you expect me to do? Knock him down and sit on his chest? I don't think I could do it. He's bigger than I am. You don't even care about your daughter. I care a lot about my daughter, but my daughter is 18, and this gentleman is how old? 21. 21. Well, I don't think I can manage people's lives when they're adult. I mean, I could tell him what marriage is like, but why depress him now? This should be a happy moment. You are so childish. Irresponsible, just the way you always were. You have some foolish idea that everything is going to work out, and it never, ever does. And you'll never do anything as a mature human being to make it work. I never had to. I always had you, dear. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I always went along with every stupid thing you ever suggested. No, the unimportant things. The big things. You always made the decisions. Well, you never let on you did, but you did, quietly but firmly. The iron hand. You always said that, but it's not true. It is true. It is Absolutely not true! true. Oh, no. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> Excuse me. I can see why you people broke up. I mean, you're really in completely different bags, aren't you? I mean, it's a classic symbiotic relationship. A what? A symbiotic relationship. It's a neurotic fusion. I mean, you feed on each other's neuroses. I mean, you're really not very good for each other, but you're stuck together for sick reasons. Sick reasons? Yeah, yeah, uh, dependency, stuff like that. I mean, I don't know exactly how it went. I only had three years of psychology, but I can see it was no good. I mean, you did the right thing to break up. Oh, thank you. Oh, wow. <laughs> I mean, it must have been a really bad scene, huh? <laughs> I talked myself blue in the face, and she told me to get lost. She's made up her mind, and that's it. Oh, no. I pleaded with her. I threatened her. No go. Stubborn? Oh, boy. It wouldn't take us so hard. Worse things could have happened. See, he doesn't mind. He's starting to drink already. Celebrating the wedding. Oh, come on. One drink. You mean you want her to get married? Like this? In the middle of the night? To this boy? Roger's not such a bad guy. You didn't get a chance to talk to him. You're out of the room. I kind of like him. Yeah, I dig you, too, man. Thank you. You know whose fault this whole thing is? It's yours. Sure, that's the way you brought her up. She's just like you. Impulsive, thoughtless. The minute she thinks of something, she does it, regardless of the consequences. Exactly like you. Oh, what do you know about me? Oh, I know. Don't worry. Debbie's told me all about you. I know you very well. <laughs> Debbie! Well, we have to talk about something. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know you pretty well, too, Paul. 
You're the kind of guy who won't go out of his neighborhood without traveler's checks. You've got dollar signs for eyes, and they could give you a heart transplant with a piggy bank. Go get them, Tiger. <laughs> and I'll tell you something else, too. Debbie used to think I was a lot of fun. That's why she married me. She liked my thoughtlessness, my impulsiveness. But I grew up. Yeah, to this. I married you to get away from my family. You're mostly your old man, who was just like this guy. Oh, 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 wait a minute, please. Now, this thing has become very clear to me. I mean, listening to you three guys, a lot of things are straightening out for me. I mean, I can see the whole thing. Let you see. Well, you know what I was saying before about the symbiotic relationship? What? What, what symbiotic relationship? This is me, not you. You stay out. Well, it all ties in. I mean, yeah. First she goes into a symbiotic, then she reverts to an old-time edible. Old-time edible? That's you. Hey, you're talking about Judith. No, ma'am, you. Oh. I'm an old-time edible? Yeah. yeah. I see the whole thing. She's marrying me to rebel against you. Who? Me? No, you. And what she really wants is him. See? Yes, you. And I just figured something else out. I never want to get married in the first place. It was all her idea. It was? Yeah. And I don't want to end up like him. Who, me? No, him. <laughs> you, you're probably living in a room somewhere, right? Well, a one-room apartment. Right. I drive a four-cylinder. Right, car right. I mean, I don't want to wind up like that. No, it's a smart kid. <laughs> I mean, in today's society, a divorce is too uh, disruptive. I mean, I got better things to do with my life. Well, I'm all ready. Shall we go, Roger? Um, uh, well, goodbye. Uh, I don't know when you'll see me again, but when you do, I'll be a married woman. Let's go, Roger. Uh, Jim, honey, uh, uh, listen. Uh, I don't think we're going to go to Vegas. What? Well, I want to talk to you about it, but I think I got a whole new slant on this marriage business. You oh, see, did I'm you... Much... What did you do? What did you tell him? Well, you didn't tell him to say anything. Oh. Honestly. You ruined everything for me. Honey, uh, don't get upset. Now, let's take a ride and talk. I want to... I'll talk, tell you all about it. Uh, you're not going to need this. Uh, come on, honey. You know, let's... There's no reason. I'll congratulate you. should be back in about an hour. <laughs>